Lord God, Father, with all our getting to get understanding that we are changed on the inside out. Beyond the storm, beyond the trial. Praise the Lord, everybody. Welcome to our setup spiritual impact training using prayer and scripture. I'm Tony Burke Brown. Welcome to our spiritual fitness class. We are going through the book of 1 John. We have gone through chapters 1, 2, and 3. We have done chapter 4 up to verse 11. Today, we're going to be doing verses 12 and 13. The ideas that we're going through every verse and every word. All the scriptures, learning and memorizing them, getting them in on the inside of us so we can apply them to our life so that we can go out and impact the world, that we know what we're teaching, what we're preaching, what we're living, what we believe, so that the word can come to our remembrance when we need it. And so open your Bibles to First John chapter 4, get a pen, paper, and a highlighter, everything that you need to take notes so that you can go back and do a review after we do our study. So we have been talking in the first part of First John chapter 4, we talked about discerning false teachers, false prophets, the Antichrist. Also, um, beginning in verse 7, then we started talking about love, loving one another, walking in love because God is love. So now we're in verses 12 and 13. And so, Father, in the name of Jesus, Lord, we thank you. We just want to praise you today and lift you up. We don't take for granted, Lord God. Father, light life abundant, life eternal, Father, that you have chosen us, that you have called us out of darkness into your marvelous light, that you made a way out of no way. We don't take for granted, Lord God, your grace and your mercy, that you loved us first and you love us most, and that you made a way out of no way, reconciling us to you. So, Father, we thank you for your Son, for your Holy Spirit. We thank you for all the spiritual blessings. Every good and perfect gift we know comes from you. And so, Father, we just thank you. We ask that your Holy Spirit will be our teacher today, that you would remove any obstacles, any hindering spirits, any Anything that's not of you, anything that would try to prevent us from receiving your word. Let it be in Jesus' name that your word goes forth, healing and delivering, strengthening us and renewing our minds, changing us from the inside out, that we will never be the same. We give you all praise, glory, and honor in Jesus' name. Amen. Praise the Lord. Verses 12 and 13, 1 John chapter 4, we're still talking about love. Today's title is Perfect Love. So it says, no man has seen God at any time. If we love one another, God dwells in us and his love is perfected in us. Hereby know we that we dwell in him and he in us because he has given us his spirit. So perfect love. This is what we're talking about. No man has seen God. It says at any time we if we love one another, then God dwells in us. And his love is perfected in us. So we don't see God face to face. But guess what? If we love one another, God is on the inside of us. His love is being perfected in us. And the word for perfected in the Greek is T-E-L-E-I-O-O. Remember, this is a video. You can pause it, stop it, go backwards, forward. This word T-E-L-E-I-O-O. It means to bring to an end. It means to complete. It means to be perfect or to perfect as a course, a race or the like to complete, to finish as a as of time or prediction. It means to accomplish, to make perfect. It means to reach the end stage, working through the entire process, the stages to reach the final phase, the conclusion. So this love as we are loving one another. God is on the inside of us and his love is being perfected. We're learning to love more and more, to overcome evil with good, to love our enemies, to love one another, to pour into one another, to minister to one another, to pray for one another, to look at the needs of others, to, to prefer others over ourselves. We're constantly growing. Whatever we go through, whenever some, you hear somebody's talking about you, laughing at you, they're mocking you, they're coming against you. This is part of the growth. This is not some attack that you whine and cry about. This is something that you say, hey, I'm being perfected in my love walk. Everybody's not going to like me. Everybody's not going to say what I want to hear. Everybody's not going to agree with me, but I'm going to overcome evil with good and I'm going to love my enemies and I'm going to do good to them that hate me and I'm going to pray for those to despitefully use and persecute me. I'm going to bless those that curse me. I'm going to do what God says, right? Because his love is being perfected in me. Anybody can love somebody who loves them, be kind to someone who's kind to them. But we know 
that we dwell in him and he in us because he's given us his spirit. And as we love one another on purpose and intentional, God dwells in us and his love is perfected in us. So you may not see him face to face, but he's on the inside of you. He's the one that compels us to love others. He shows us how to love others through the shed blood on the cross. Jesus dying and being raised from the dead, just knowing that kind of love compels us to love one another. And when we can love like that and we're being perfected in our love walk, we are we are constantly growing in it constantly making progress, going through the process. So don't get mad because somebody is coming at you or or talking about you or laughing at you or turning away from you, right? It's an opportunity for spiritual growth to be able to allow God's love to be perfected in you, right? Because he is love. The more we're perfected in love, the more we're drawn near to him and he draws near to us. The word says, draw nigh to God and he will draw nigh to you. So even though we haven't seen him face to face, you can draw near to him and experience his fullness just by walking in love. The NLT says in verses 12 and 13, no one has ever seen God, but if we love each other, God lives in us and his love is brought to full expression in us. And God has given us his spirit as proof that we live in him and he in us. And so we are perfecting the love walk. Everything you do, we talked in the last session, make sure you're motivated by love. Before you speak, before you say anything to anybody about any about anybody, before you make a decision, before you, you know, do anything, some things you you have to stop doing some things or turn away from some things and some habits and some mindsets because you love others and you don't want to cause them to stumble. So there's some things that your flesh may want to do. There may be some things you want to have, but Somebody else needs it. Or if you do this, it may make someone else stumble. It may make them fall. So everything you're doing is because you are getting, that love is being perfected in you. That the things that you do, they have to be beneficial to the kingdom. They have to be things that are drawing others to God, that are showing God's love, that are perfecting or perfecting you and drawing others in, right? 1 Corinthians 3, 16 and 17, write it down. It says, do you not know that you are the temple of God and that the spirit of God dwells in you? If anyone defiles the temple of God, God will destroy him for the temple of God is holy, which temple you are. I went here because the verses that we just read, let us know, right? That if we love one another, God lives in us. His love is brought to full expression in us. And God has given us his spirit as this proof that we live in him and he's in us. And so 1 Corinthians 3, 16 and 17 reminds us that we are the temple of God and the spirit of God does dwell in us, right? And we can't defile the temple of God or he'll destroy those that do. The temple of God is what? It's holy. We are that temple. So we have to walk in love because we can't walk in hatred and bitterness and be holy. God says, be ye holy for I'm holy. This is about being an imitator of our father. This is about following after Christ as a disciple, right? First Corinthians 6, 19 and 20 says, or do you not know that your body is the temple of the Holy Spirit who is in you, whom you have from God and you're not your own? For you were bought at a price. Therefore, glorify God in your body and in your spirit, which are God's. We belong to him. Our body belongs to him. Everything we do is to bring glory to his name. How can we bring glory to his name if if he's merciful to us and loves us enough that he sent his son to die and raised from the dead so we can have life and have it abundant and eternal. But we're out here um, trying to get people back, trying to get revenge, holding on to anger, gossiping, backbiting and slandering, holding on to resentment, have a root of bitterness in our heart. We can't do that and represent God and have the spirit of God on the inside of us and say we belong to him, that we're his temple and we're holy. No, we have to make a decision that we're going to obey. We're going to choose life. We want to draw near to God. And so we have to acknowledge that we are his temple and the spirit of God is on the inside of us. And we have to live as such a Holy Ghost, Holy Spirit controlled life. Perfect love. 
as the spirit of the one who raised Christ from the dead lives within us. Perfect love is being perfected in you through test trials, tribulation, affliction, uh, persecution, mocking, whatever it is that we have to go through in this world. And we go through it all. But that's not the time to shut down and give up and get mad. It's the time to raise up and overcome evil with good and learn to be perfected in your love walk because God loved you when you didn't love him. He was merciful to you when you weren't merciful to others. Now is the time for us to do as the word commands and be imitators of our father and be followers of our savior and to be controlled by God's spirit. So go back and meditate on 1 John 6, verses 19 and 20, 1 John 3, 16 and 17, and 1 John uh, chapter 4, verses 12 and 13. Memorize them, get them on the inside of you, because we are being perfected. The Bible tells us, uh, Jesus talks in Matthew chapter 5, verses 44 through 48 when he talks about us loving our enemies and blessing those that curse us and doing good to those that hate us and praying for those that despitefully use and persecute us he says so we could be like our father he says god lets the sun um rise and the, and the rain fall on the just and the unjust the good and the evil so in verse 48 he tells us to do these things so we can be perfect even as our father in heaven is perfect So go back and meditate on the verses of scripture. Father, in the name of Jesus, Lord, we're asking for your help. Help us to love. Help us to overcome evil with good. Help us, Lord God, to look at the interests of others as well as our own. Help us, Lord God, to deny ourselves and take up our cross and follow Christ, to be imitators, not to make you ashamed, but to show your love to the world. Father, how you've loved us and been merciful to us. Help us to boast in your mighty works. Help us to praise you continuously. Lord God, help us to exalt your name, to lift you up to magnify you and everything that we do help us to be motivated by our desire lord god to please you to be approved by you because we love you with all our heart soul strength and mind and we love our neighbors ourselves so father i thank you today that we let go of bitterness and rage we let go of evil speaking we let go lord god of clamor and malice and father today we walk in love and we live peaceably among all men as much as possible let it all be for your glory in jesus name amen God bless you, love you to life, and I will see you on our next sit-ups. The word that did it for me, when you want inner healing and you want a sound mind, peace of mind, life application of God's word is the answer. I encourage you, get spiritual help for mental health and learn to apply God's word daily and receive his healing.